a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. There's one thing that even the most amateur of astronomers can agree on. The universe is big, so big that even scientists could use help charting it. That's where Chris Lintot comes in. Chris runs the Zooniverse, a collection of citizen science projects. In this talk from 2013, he shares how projects like this empower scientists and non-scientists alike to make significant contributions. If we want to understand the evolution of the universe, if we want to understand how we got this wonderful universe that we see around us, we need to study galaxies. But there's a problem. The problem is that we don't really like the universe that we've ended up with. We've got this 90%, 96% of the universe in a form that we don't understand in dark matter and dark energy. And so we need to pay closer attention to each one of these millions and billions of galaxies. We need to t- treat them not as points of light, but as individual spirals because, or, or, or galaxies, because the shapes of the galaxies tell us about their history. And that's what we set out to do. We set out to try and identify the shapes of the galaxies. And so we needed a new solution. We decided to call for help. We set up a website called Galaxy Zoo. And Galaxy Zoo asked everyone in the world to help us classify these galaxies, to say what shape they are. And on the first couple of days of Galaxy Zoo, we got this amazing response. We were doing 70,000 galaxy classifications every hour. And while we haven't continued at that speed, Over time, we've done hundreds of millions of classifications from hundreds of thousands of people. And it has endless enthusiasm for this task of sorting through pictures of the universe. Because we had so many eyes and we could pay individual attention to each image, we also discovered that as astronomers, we're not the only people struggling with this data flood, with having more information than we knew what to do with. This is a problem that confronts scientists in field after field after field. And so over the last few years, we've helped researchers not just look at galaxies, but provide the most accurate forecasts of whether solar flares are going to hit the Earth with a project called Solar Stormwatch. We've um, transcribed more than a million logbook pages from World War I Royal Naval logs to help climate scientists understand the weather of the past and thus predict the weather of the future. And we're also helping cancer scientists in the UK do their pathology by classifying images. Each of these projects makes use of the time and the pattern recognition abilities of hundreds of thousands of people and uses them collectively to accelerate science. We've collected all of these projects together in what we call the Zooniverse, a platform for this kind of citizen science, a place where people can sit in front of their web browsers and within a few minutes see something that no one has ever seen before, and more importantly, make an authentic contribution to science. This is science education, but it's also the cutting edge. People actually get to help us. Even that's not the exciting part. Magical things happen once you convince people that they too can take part in science, once you convince them that they have the ability to contribute. And to illustrate this, I'd like to talk about a project called Planet Hunters. Uh, It's a project that's been running for a few years now, and we thought we'd try and discover planets around other stars. But we thought there might be a few planets left over for our citizen scientists to catch. Now, whenever you go hunting planets, you can't see the planets directly. What you have to do instead is look for the indirect signs that are there. And one of the most effective methods is to look for what we call transits. And a planet transiting in front of its star will cause the star to dip in brightness by much less than 1%. But if you can catch that dip, then you can infer that the planet is there. It's a rather simple case of dark matter, if you like. You can infer that this planet is there from the data. And we have data from NASA's Kepler satellite, which is staring Actually, I feel rather sorry for it. It's got the most boring job in the world because it just stares at 150,000 stars and every 29 minutes tells us what brightness they are. But it can send that data down here and we can look for these transits. And sometimes these transits are really obvious. In fact, in this case, they're so obvious that you can hear them. That modulation is the dip of the repeated transit of a planet orbiting its star in just a few days. 
But sometimes the transits aren't so obvious. A moon orbiting a Neptune-sized world now known as Planet Hunters 1b. This was a planet discovered by a group of citizen scientists using our project. And Planet Hunters 1b is currently a unique world. It's the only world that we know of that has four suns in its sky. So this is a system with two pairs of stars, and the planet orbits one of those pairs. It's a planet that simulations tell us shouldn't exist. So we didn't even know to look for this, and yet there it is. And it's there because a group of volunteers saw something strange in the data, and they didn't even tell us about it. They went out, they got more data from the professional NASA website, they did their own analysis, and they came to us when they'd worked out what was going on. These were people who did not start off as scientists, who'd gone through the engine of motivation, uh, being convinced that they could do something real by taking part in the main project, and then collaborated together to make a, a truly gobsmacking discovery. Uh, and then we made the nice image so that they could try and imagine what their planet was like. This is real citizen science. And so we're at a stage now where we're running more than 20 projects, where we have humans and robots collaborating together. We have the robotic systems that take the data, like poor Kepler up in space. And then we have the humans down here on Earth uh, who are able to analyze the data. This is the future that we're heading toward. This particular machine that's going to run roughshod over our classifiers is the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. This is a telescope being built right now. It's going to be on a mountaintop in Chile. It's as big as the biggest telescopes in the world right now, but it's a survey telescope. It's going to scan the whole sky once every three nights. And it's no exaggeration to say it's going to provide a movie of the universe. We're going to see all the asteroids whizzing around the solar system. We're going to see all the stars flickering as they have star spots. We're going to see the planets will catch those transits, and we're going to see the centers of galaxies flicker as material falls down into the black holes that lurk within their centers. But to cope with LSST is going to be a challenge. It's going to produce roughly 30 terabytes of reduced data each and every night. If all we care about is things that change in the universe, that simplify the problem, a conservative estimate is that we're going to have half a million alerts every single night. Even if all of you, even if everyone watching, even if we all commit to doing Galaxy Zoo and its friends, we're not going to cope with this. So we need new solutions to combine the machine with the human. But luckily, there are things we could do. The first thing we could do is we could just be smarter about using people's attention. We can pay attention to what it is that machines could do. Maybe they can classify the routine events. We can let them do that, and we can give only those things that really need human attention to the humans. The other thing we could do is that we can educate our volunteers. We can use the power of the Zooniverse, the power of citizen science, to train up a generation of volunteers so that they're able to take on the task of dealing with the truly unusual things that LSST uh, is able to provide us. A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. There's one thing that even the most amateur of astronomers can agree on. The universe is big so big that even scientists could use help charting it. That's where Chris Lintot comes in. Chris runs the Zooniverse, a collection of citizen science projects. In this talk from 2013, he shares how projects like this empower scientists and non-scientists alike to make significant contributions. If we want to understand the evolution of the universe, if we want to understand how we got this wonderful universe that we see around us, we need to study galaxies. But there's a problem. The problem is that we don't really like the universe that we've ended up with. We've got this 90%, 96% of the universe in a form that we don't understand in dark matter and dark energy. And so we need to pay closer attention to each one of these millions and billions